Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Did anybody Lord. come to lift up the name of Jesus on this Lord. morning? Hallelujah. Anybody can say that God is my everything. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on and help Hallelujah. us lift up the name of Jesus on this morning. Everything to me, you're everything to me. Everything, everything, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything, everything, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything, everything, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. Come on, put your hands together. God is our everything. He's our mountain mover. Hallelujah. Come on and help us praise him on this morning. Hey. If you believe God is your everything. 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 You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything. Everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything. Everything to me. Everything Come on, to clap me. your hands. Hallelujah. Woo. We bless your name on this morning, Jesus. We thank you for being our everything. We thank you for being a mind regulator on this morning. Hallelujah. Everything. Everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything. Everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything. Everything. Oh. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything you are. Everything you are. So we say, Master. Master. Oh, Savior. Savior. We call him ruler. Ruler. Redeemer. Redeemer. You've been my shelter, shelter, provider, provider. We call you Jesus, Jesus. We call you Jesus, Jesus. One more time, say Master, Master. oh Savior. Savior. We call him ruler, ruler. You've been my redeemer, redeemer. Come on and call him Jesus. More nobody like you, Jesus. I searched all over, Jesus. Couldn't find nobody like you, Jesus. Come on and call that name, Jesus. He has a name above every name, Jesus. There's nobody like him, Jesus. Nobody bigger than Jesus, Jesus. He healed my body, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
with you. Nobody can kill him. Go ahead and praise his name. Come on and bless his name. Somebody call his name. Come on and say his name. Come on, call his name. Not Muhammad. Not Allah. But it's Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Amen. Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Now go ahead and praise this Jesus. Who's the one that can save you? Who's the one that can heal you? Who's the one that can deliver you? Who is the Son of God? Who is the King of Kings? Who is the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Look at somebody and tell a neighbor his name is Jesus. If you need deliverance, his name is Jesus. If you need peace in your mind, his name is Jesus. If you need your heart fixed, his name is Jesus. Whatever you're seeking for is found in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody and tell them no other name. No other name. No other name under heaven whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I love Jesus. 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 Everybody say it. I love me. I love Say it like you mean it. Say it from your heart. Say it like you mean it. Let the devil hear it. I love Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. I love Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I love Jesus. I love him because he first loved me. Look at somebody tell a neighbor, I love him. I love him because he first loved me. Oh, hallelujah. He didn't leave me out there in my sin. He could have let me die. Look at somebody tell him I got a right to praise him. When I think on the goodness of Jesus, when I think on the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me. Look at somebody and tell him, neighbor, that's why I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life, and I'm glad I have Jesus. I'm glad he's merciful. I'm glad he's gracious. I'm glad he's long-suffering. I'm glad he's forbearing. I'm glad he's holy. I'm glad he's all-knowing. I'm glad he's all-powerful. And I'm glad to be called his own. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. If you would, only if you're able to, we'd ask everyone to rest on your feet as we go before the throne of grace. As we go to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Only those who are able to stand on your feet, we would. This is not in reverence to me, but it's reverence to our Lord and Savior. This is a precious time. This is a precious moment. We're coming before the God of this creation, the God of everything. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now as humble as we know how. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your mercies, your loving kindness toward us. We thank you, Lord, that we have this moment, this time, this opportunity. This may be our last time we don't know. 
So, Father, we come to you as humble as we know how. We asking you, Lord, Father, Father God, just to have your way on this morning. We want to say thank you, God, for this day. This is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We make a choice to rejoice. In spite of what we're dealing with, in spite of what we're going through, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it because you have created this day, Father God. So, Father, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you, Father God, for the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you, God, for being, for knowing that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And we thank you, God, for what you did in order to, to reconcile us back unto you, Lord God, because of the cross of Christ. And so we say thank you. Father God, we pray right now those that are amongst us that may not be saved, even those that are tuning in, God. We pray that your Holy Spirit will convict hearts on today, Lord God. Running down to the altar saying, what must I do to be saved, Father God? Remind us that if man wants to spend eternity with you, man must first repent, Father God. And so we say thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the truth that's even going to come on today. We ask thank you for the man of God that's going to preach your word, anoint him afresh, Lord God. Word his mouth in the name of Jesus. Let him preach it without fear of favor, Father God. Father God, we want to say thank you for what you're going to do. We pray that somebody may not have been filled with your Holy Spirit yet. We pray that they may receive the promised gift of your Holy Ghost. We pray for the saints, Lord God. You know every situation, you know every heart, you know every mind, you know everything that's going on in the lives of your people. We pray for strength. We pray for direction. We pray for clarity. We pray for understanding, Lord God. You promise that if we acknowledge you in all our ways, you will direct our path. So direct us, Father. We need a word from you, Lord God. But most of all, we come to bless you, dear God. We came to worship you, dear God. We come to proclaim your name. We want to say thank you for what you have done. And Father, we thank you for everybody who has assembled on this morning, both sinners and saints alike, both members and visitors alike. Reach out and touch everybody right now. Have your way is our prayer. By the time this service is over, we want to look more like Jesus, talk more like Jesus, act more like Jesus. We want to be conformed to the image of your son. And we want to say thank you for leadership. Thank you for Apostle Murray. Thank you for Lady Danielle Murray. Ask you to continue to guide our pastor, continue to strengthen him in this last day hour. Have your way as our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go with me in the word of God. We're coming from Psalms for our scripture reading on this morning. Psalm 10 going to begin at the 12th verse and the 13th verse and skip down to the 16th through the 18th verse. That's Psalms, the 10th chapter, 12 and 13, and then 16 through 18. Psalms 10 and 12 says this, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Congregation, Sixteenth verse says, "The Lord is King." Somebody ought to get excited about that. Yeah, the Lord is King forever and ever. Nobody can take Him off His throne. <laughs> Look at somebody tell Him, nobody can take Him off His throne. <laughs> he forever reigns. The heathen are perished out of His land. Congregation. And altogether, the 18th verse, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord. Put those hands together for our pastor, Pastor Murray. Put them together for Lady Danielle Murray. Put them together for Evangelist Davis and his wife, Sister Davis. Put them together for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Put them together for Evangelist Diane Pierce, we thank God for the woman of God. <laughs> now put them together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus reign. Somebody shout Jesus reign. Hallelujah. We're moving on. We're receiving our morning observations from Sister Erica Howard. Amen. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we'd like to welcome you to Garland Full Gospel 
holy temple where our leaders are none other than the great apostle Herman L. Murray Jr. And our first lady is the beautiful Lady Danielle. Let's give it up for our leaders on this morning. Amen, amen. And if you are visiting with us for the first time, would you please just lift your hand or stand, amen, so that we may acknowledge you on this morning. Amen. We thank God for our guest on this morning. Come on, Full Gospel Garland, let's give it up for our guest. Welcome. Praise God. You may have your places on today. Amen. We appreciate you being here with us. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. And on behalf of our leaders, we always say you may come as a friend, but after today, you're going to leave here as family, and we want you to join us again in worship. And so our service times are as follows. On Sunday, we have Sunday school at 9.45 a.m. in the main sanctuary only, and worship service to follow at 11 o'clock a.m. On Sunday evening, prayer begins at 6 o'clock p.m. with uh, evening worship to follow at 6.30 p.m. And then on Thursday nights, we have our family night, and, and we uh, have prayer at 7 o'clock p.m. with the service beginning at 7.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Amen? Amen. And we want you to join us as often as you would like for any or all of those services. Amen. By the way of announcements on this morning, our annual women's convention is April 1st through the 5th. Come on, full gospel. Let's get excited. Amen. The theme this year is living a yielded life on Monday night. The hostess of the convention, Lady Danielle Murray, will be preaching. Amen. On Tuesday night, we have Pastor Jacqueline and Cannon. On Wednesday night, amen, Evangelist Teresa Black. Thursday night, Evangelist Ashton McCurdy. And on um, uh, thir Friday morning, we're going to have our prayer breakfast, and that will be held at the Hilton Garden Inn in Duncanville. And Evangelist Teresa Black will be our speaker for that. Amen. You can register to attend that on the FGHT app. And then last but not least, on Friday night, Pastor Kimberly Ray. Amen. We ought to get excited. The day services will be held at 1030 a.m. and the evening ones will be held at 730 p.m. If you would like to submit something to the Women's Convention booklet, we're still looking for submissions. Uh, please visit the app for details, and we're asking that you please send all words and pictures to design team at fght.org by Monday, March 18th. Also, by way of announcements, the Holiness Crusade is heading to St. Louis. We want you to join Pastor Jewel Lee, Pastor Kimberly Ray, and our apostle for a one-night experience. If you are interested in going, uh, please either see me or contact Brother TK uh, to s secure your spot. I believe the bus will be going. Amen. To all aspiring, licensed, and ordained ministers, there will be a meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. at our Dallas church uh, in the sanctuary with our apostle. All ministers are asked to be present and on time. And as far as our Garland uh, um, announcements, calling all Sunday school teachers and aspiring Sunday school teachers. Elder Howard would like to meet with you briefly next Sunday uh, uh, morning, March 17th. Amen. And tonight is second Sunday night, and we will commemorate the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're asking that the saints dress in white for the communion service. And that concludes this morning's observations. Again, welcome to Garland Full Gospel, where here we believe in excellence pursued and holiness personified. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Welcome this morning with my mind. Say, Lord Jesus, 
Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. It was sad on Jesus. Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind, and it was sad on Jesus, Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind, and it was sad on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And singing with my mind, it was sad on Jesus, Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind and it was sad on Jesus, Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind and it was sad on Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I'm going to put those hands together for the choir. Didn't we enjoy them? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're moving right along. It's time to praise God and I give it on this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope, please let our ushers know they will tend to your need. That way you can the body of Christ, amen, to change the hearts and the minds of people. Y'all can get quiet. Amen. The devil, did you know the devil will send people to church? Amen. The devil ain't got real people, but he'll send the counterfeits into the body of Christ. And that's the reason why, amen, you've got to be careful about who you yoke up with even in the house of God. Amen. Everybody that's shouting and speaking in some kind of tongue ain't got the Holy Ghost. You still got folk that the devil has sent in to be a negative example. Amen. Before the eye of those young ones that are coming seeking a better life and a different walk. Amen. But you've got to be careful and you've got to know that that's not God. That's why we've got to preach to you the word. Amen. Because the word of God is a lamp and a light. Amen. It's going to shine on all of those motives that other people are trying to hide. And I don't care how good they talk. What you've got to learn how to do. Amen. It's measure their conduct by the word of God. Oh, Lord, everybody that's speaking in tongues and trying to prophesy to you, amen, ain't doing so by the Spirit of God. The Bible says you try the Spirit, y'all. I'm trying to figure out if I got somebody here that know the Word. Amen. He says you've got to try the Spirit. I don't care, amen, if they look like they saved. Try that Spirit. Lord, y'all ain't said if they prophesied, you ain't got to just submit to every word that folk trying to speak over your life. You try that Spirit. And how do you try the spirit, huh? By the word of God. Oh God, somebody said you try the spirit by the spirit. No, you try the spirit by the word of God. Because the word of God is already settled in the heaven. Isn't that what the scripture tells us? Amen. Psalms 119 and 89 says forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. If you don't like it, you can't do nothing with the word. Amen. The apostle used to tell us you got to go to heaven and change this word. And by the time you get there, changing it ain't going to be on your mind. Amen. So we try the spirit by the word of God. So what does that tell us? That tells us we got to know this word, don't it? Amen. You got to know what it says for yourself. And that's why I feel bad for people. Amen. That say I can't go to church because I know this about people. And I've seen people do that. They don't know the word. Because if they knew the word, they would realize the Bible never said, amen, measure your life by people. He said Christ left us an example. Oh, look at somebody and tell them Christ is my example. I ain't worried about who lying. I ain't worried about who cheating. Amen. I ain't leaving the church because of shysters. Amen. Christ is my example. Uh, thank you, kind spirit. He, he's who I look to. Amen. He's the one that lights me up. Uh, amen. He's the one that gives me direction and, and gives me instruction. Amen. He's my role model. And I don't care what else is going on in the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm looking to Christ. Uh, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. Yeah. Thank you, kind spirit. You you gotta realize, hey man, the devil is not about
the praise. I give your name the glory, Jesus. Thank you for renewing me again. Thank you for reviving me again. Thank you for tr let me trust in you again, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I remember there was a time when I was, hallelujah. I was in a really bad place and I couldn't see myself out of it. And I remember that I said, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to help me out of this situation. And I want you to know that God came in and delivered me out of that situation. And not only did he deliver me, he restored my faith. He restored my mind. He restored my heart. And I want you to know if you're under the sound of my voice on today, if you've lost your faith, stand on the word of God. Trust in the word of God. He will restore you. I'm a living witness that he will restore you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My faith has been restored. Hallelujah. Come on and give him some worship this morning. Come on, if God has ever renewed your heart and restored your spirit, come on and give him some praise this morning. Let me ask you like this. Have you ever been to the edge? And back. Have you ever been in a circumstance where it seemed more convenient to walk out or walk away from your faith in God. But you know, I'm grateful to God on this morning because even when the enemy try to give you a mind to want to let him go, God is committed enough to you. He said, I'll never let you go. Come on, let's give God some praise on today. Hallelujah. I come to tell you here, restore every broken piece. I don't care how small it is. I say, here, restore every broken piece. Y'all not talking to me this morning. I say, here, restore every broken piece, every shattered piece. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes if we're not careful, we'll confuse the way with the way maker. We'll confuse the, the provision with God's providence. If you're not careful, you'll be dependent upon the way. But you got to remember, we serve a God. He's the way maker, even when it don't seem like there's a way. God is a creative God. He can create a way out of no way. That's not what I'm preaching this morning. Amen. But I just want to encourage somebody. Don't confuse the way with the way maker. Amen. He has a way of leading you and guiding you. And bringing you, amen, to the place that he has for you. One more time, lift your hands and give God some praise this morning. Mm. Woo. If you've ever been restored, you ought to give him some praise right there. Oh, he'll restore you. <laughs> I heard him say everything that the canker worm and the, and the palmer worm and the, the caterpillar and the locusts have eaten. He said, I don't care how long it's my being, the canker worm got to throw up <laughs> where he ate. Palmer worm got to throw up where he ate. 
What I'm trying to tell you, he'll restore. You ought to look at somebody and say, neighbor, he'll restore, he'll restore. Come on, look at about a few people and say, neighbor, I don't care what you have lost. He can restore. Lord, I'm getting excited. I said, I don't care what you have lost on today. I come to tell you, God has the power. Oh, I heard him say, listen, amen, even if he's dead. He told Mary and Martha, he said, I am the resurrection. And I, am, I don't care if he's dead in the grave. I don't care if your dream is dead. I don't care if the business seemed dead. When Jesus stepped on the scene, creative power comes forth. He will restore. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on and clap those hands. Amen. Give God some praise. He will restore. Give God a praise. Amen. For this wonderful choir. Amen. That is sung. Amen. Into our hearts. Amen. And let's give Jesus. Amen. One more hand clap. Truly he is worthy of all the glory. And he is worthy of all the honor. Amen. Truly, amen. God is worthy of all the praise. You may be seated on this morning. I want to give honor to God who is my heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, my Savior, and the Holy Ghost, my keeper. Thank you, amen, that the last time you saw me, I'm still saved, still sanctified, still got a mind to serve the Lord and run on and see what the end is going to be. Definitely want to give honor, amen, to our leader, amen, Apostle Herman M. Murray and his wife. Come on, let's thank God for them. We honor God, amen, for not only good leadership, but strong leadership. Amen. And we also want to thank God, amen, for Evangelist Pierce being in our midst on today. Amen. Thank God. Amen. When you need some strength in the time of need, she has a word for you. Amen. We thank God for her, amen, and the ministry. Amen, that God has given her. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you that's here on today. Amen. All of our visitors. Amen. And to those that may be watching, we just thank God, amen, for being saved. Thank God, amen, that he is a keeper to them that want to be kept. Amen. Don't want to boil your patience this morning. Amen. Want to give you what God has given me, if that's all right. Amen. I want to call your attention, amen, to the gospel according to St. John. Amen. The fifth chapter. And I want to start reading at the 24th verse. And we'll conclude at verse number 29. Hallelujah. Amen. It's John chapter number five. Starting at verse 24. Amen. And when you have it, please indicate by saying amen. Amen. And Jesus is saying these words. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of God. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Jesus said it don't matter, amen. That's one thing they say, amen, in the grave all men are equal. It don't matter where you, amen, where you come from, what your background is, that's where life leads all of us. And Jesus said, amen, it don't matter, amen, where you at, amen, what grave you are in, there's coming a day when you're going to hear God's voice. Amen. If you don't, amen, if you're not privileged, amen, to be here when he comes in the air, he said there's coming a day when he's going to speak. 
and everyone in the grave is going to come forth. <laughs> Everybody, amen. It don't matter who you are, black, white, amen, Jew, Greek, it don't matter, amen, uh, Democrat, Republican, it don't matter what, what you are, everyone is going to hear his voice and come forth. But then he says, it's them that have done good, they will get up into the resurrection of life. And those that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. My question is, what separated them? If they're equal going, going down, what made them different coming back up? And I believe it's in the 24th verse where we're going to derive our text today. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, hear that he that heareth my word and believeth. On him that sent me hath everlasting life, and you shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. I want you to look to your neighbor and help me announce my text this morning. Ask your neighbor, what are you doing with what he said? Amen. Look at somebody else. Amen. God has done a lot of talking. But what are you doing with what he said? Because based on what you do with his word, <laughs> it's going to determine how you get up and how you stand before him on that great getting up morning. Can I get a witness today? Amen. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. It's not enough just to hear. Mm. Amen. But you got to do something with what he said. Look at your neighbor again. Tell neighbor, you got to do something with it. What are you doing with what he said? Amen. Just want to, we're going to just jump in today. Is that okay? Amen. The Bible lets us know that Jesus is the son of God. Amen. He's, he's not like any other created being. He's not like, amen, the seraphim or the cherubim. He's not like any other four living creatures. Jesus is distinct in his person as the son of God. And as such, being the son of God, he came down to earth and he placed supreme importance, not only on the word of God, but on his own words. Can I get a witness here? Jesus came on the scene and the Bible said he spake as one having the authority. He didn't have to reference nobody. He was the reference. That's why he could say, verily, verily, I say. He didn't have to quote nobody. Amen. Some of us, amen, we have to lean on, amen, certain pillars of authority, amen, with certain expertise when it comes to certain subjects. But Jesus, when it came to the subject of God, he was a, he was the prime he was he was the premium he was amen he was the prime scholar amen in that day it didn't matter amen what uh, the pharisees or the sadducees how long they may have studied when jesus came on the scene he didn't need to quote them he didn't need to quote their sources because he was the source can i get a witness here amen the bible says amen that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. And the Bible says further down, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. I'm talking about Jesus being the word of God. Amen. Came down in human form and dwelt among men. Amen. And as the word of God, amen, Jesus was able to fully express the will of God. Amen. He wasn't like any other prophets, any of the other men and women of God that we see through scripture. Amen. Jesus was perfectly able and qualified, amen, to relate the father to men. Amen. Because God did not want us to be a uh, dwell rather in a state of confusion. He didn't want us, amen, to be perplexed about who he is. Amen. So what did he do? Amen. After he had sent some prophets and sent some different men to, rep uh, to represent him. Amen. God said, I'm going to send my own son. He knows me like nobody else does. And he is going to be able to express fully, amen, the will of God in your hearing. And that's why the Bible, amen, lets us know that Jesus is that final and he is that special revelation of God. 
Can I get a witness here? Amen. The Bible says, God, who at sundry times and in divers' manners, he spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. And look, I, I love Moses. He's one of my favorites. I love, I love the men and women of God. I mean, I love, amen, Deborah, prophetess Deborah. I love, amen, all of the ones that he, he used in times past. But listen, when God wanted to get the job done right, he sent his son. Can I get a witness? He said, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, and by whom also he made the worlds. And can I tell you today, he was the last revelation out of heaven. Can I get a witness here? Lord, I'm trying to come down. I say he's the last revelation out of heaven. If you're looking for any other thing, amen, to tell you about yourself, you're looking in the wrong place. Can I get a witness here? Amen. You're looking in the wrong place. Amen. We got people in today that's trying to lean on to other authority other than the authority that God gave us in the word. Other than the authority that God gave us uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. And I come to tell you, amen, your horoscope can't tell you like Jesus can. Y'all better say amen. I feel, I feel a street preach today. I said, I want you to know, amen, your horoscopes, amen, I don't care what you are. Pisces, Capricorn, it don't matter. Amen, when I think of that, I think of bugs and stuff. Amen, listen, I come to tell you, amen, you can't lean on to that. Can I get a witness here? Jesus is the last revelation that came out of heaven. And you can't be a child of God and you're trying to lean on horoscopes. Why would you want to lean on anything that says horror? That don't even, God, that don't even make sense. That's scary. I don't want nothing spooky like that. Can I get a witness here? Let me lean on Jesus. What's my sign? The cross. Because it was at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. I come to tell you, he's the last revelation. Can I get a witness here? And that's why you got to be careful today. And then because the enemy will try to come up into your household and try to lead. If he can't get you, he'll try to lead your children astray. Amen. You in the room, amen, praying and seeking God and reading the scriptures. And they in another room, amen, playing with a Ouija boy. Listen, get that trash out of your house. Can I get a witness here? And baptize them children with some anointed oil. Can I get a witness? here. There is no other means by which God wants to speak into our hearts other than Jesus the Christ. Can I get a witness here? Lord have mercy you got people, even Christians burning sage. Make no sense. Amen. If you're trying to burn sage, amen, because you feel something in the atmosphere, that's foolishness you feel. <laughs> Lord, Lord have mercy. I said that's foolishness you feel. Can I get a witness here? Ain't no child of God got any business walking around smelling like weed because that's what that mess smell like. Smell like a bunch of stank skunk weed. Get that mess out of your house. Light you a candle. Amen. And fix everything. Amen. And get down on your knees and say, God, reveal yourself to me. And I come to tell you when he does, it's going to sound like the word of God. It's going to sound like Jesus. Jesus, huh? it's gonna sound like what his word said. Yeah. I come to tell you, no one could speak from a greater vantage point than Jesus. If I want to know, amen, who God was, if I want to know how God, amen, did this thing or what his will is for me, as much as I love Moses, Moses can't help me. As much as I like David, David can't help me. As much as I like, amen, Samuel, Samuel can't help me. Oh, but if I want to see, amen, how, what God's will is for my life, let me come to that amen. Let me come to the eternal amen, to the eternal voice that came out of heaven. He put on flesh and he dwelt among men and he was able to say verily verily I say I come to tell you that's what you need in your life you need the authority of the word of God you can't find no better person than the person of Jesus Christ we talking about what are you doing with what he said because see you know we're living in a day of time where people don't even elevate Jesus as he should be can I get a witness here? 
People think, amen, all some of these other idol gods and stuff is on par and on the same wavelength as Jesus the Christ. Man, listen, throw that stuff in the trash. Amen, throw that booty in the trash. I'm Listen, amen, he said you shouldn't have no other gods before me anyway. Amen, so why Christians, listen, that ain't decoration. That's an idol. Get that thing out of there. Can I get a witness here? I want you to know the one, amen, that dwelt in the bosom of the Father. He was perfectly qualified to relate the heart of the Father. Can I get a witness here? The Bible says Jesus dwelt in his bosom. As the word of God, he was there nestled. Lord, have mercy in the bosom of God. So who else, who better to tell us what God's will is for our life? Even when he was on earth, the Bible says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ooh, the Bible says that Jesus said unto him, amen, when he was talking to Philip, and he was telling, listen, I'm going to show you the Father. Amen. And Philip, amen, he was perplexed. He said, listen, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. It will satisfy us. And Jesus said, listen, have I been around you so long, amen, that you have not known me? That's why, amen, it's not enough just to go to church. Lord, have mercy. It's not enough, amen, just to darken the doorstep. Amen. You got to do something with the word. Amen. That God has given you. Can I say this? You got to be careful which church you go to. Because everybody ain't preaching the fullness of Jesus Christ. Listen, can I get a witness here? Amen. I come to tell you, everybody not preaching. Amen. The fullness of Jesus Christ. Amen. And people are just like Philip. Amen. You've been around Jesus so long that he's become common to you. He's not special. He's not supreme. He's not preeminent. He's not high. And he's not lifted up. Oh, but I come to tell you, you got to be able to recognize the importance of who Jesus is. Amen. Many people today want to focus on the impact of Jesus' ministry through miracles. But you miss the importance of the man. <laughs> we look at the stuff that he's able to do, and I'll come to tell you, he's, he's still a miracle worker. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's still a miracle worker. But I come to tell you, he did more than just want to show or perform miracles. He came to show us the Father. He came to reveal his will to us. He came to die for our sins. And you have to understand who he is. He's not like everybody else. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he ain't like everybody else. Amen. We're talking about the son of God. Amen. He may have had many other sons. Amen. Or many other angels or many other amen, beings in the heavenly starry host. But there is one Jesus. Lord have mercy. There's one man who is the mediator between us and God. And that is the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. Even, Lord have mercy, even the disciples, it's, it's crazy because these are the people that hung out with Jesus. You would think if anybody knew who Jesus was, it'd be the ones that after the miracles was over, after all that stuff, I, after it coming across on the, uh, on the Sea of Galilee, you would think those that was able to just kick back and just, you know, talk it up with Jesus, you would know. This man is not an ordinary man. This is not just an ordinary person. He's not like everybody else. The Bible says at one occasion, amen, now listen to this. The Bible says, amen, that Jesus was transfigured. Took Peter, James, and John with him, and he was transfigured on the mountain. I mean, the brightness of his glory shone through his clothes. That's what he mean when he said, and we beheld his glory. We, we, we saw it. We witnessed it. We, we beheld it. We, we felt the, the glow, the radiance of his being. Lord, have mercy. And even while he was there, the Bible says that God uh, sent or allowed Moses and Elijah to be there with him. And Peter, somebody say Peter. Lord, have mercy. Peter, bless him. And Peter, amen, with, I, listen, I probably would have did the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> amen. But Peter said, look, it's good for us to be here. <laughs> if you're okay with it, we, you know what, let's just make some tabernacles, one for you first. You know, you, and let's also make one for Elijah and Moses. The Bible says, while he yet spake, 
before the words could leave his lips good, while he was, while he was yet breathing, while he was yet speaking, the Bible says, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And I come to tell you, amen, Jesus. Amen. You can't lower him down to the level of a prophet or a good man. He is the son of God in whom God is well pleased. Hear ye him. Because can I tell you, in this generation that we're living in now, we got people that are elevating preachers and elevating prophets, amen, to be more credible than the very Son of God. I come to tell you, amen, there's nobody higher, there's nobody more qualified, there's nobody more glorious than the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, and it's no wonder. That this church world is messed up. It's no wonder this church world is so confused. Amen. Because they've elevated man to the level of God. How in the world can you take the words of a man and you got him and Jesus? No. You, you are in error. You are. I'm just trying to tell you, you're confused. And if you're a prophet, listen, you ain't that kind of a prophet. Amen. Because the Bible says, amen, when you really have the spirit of prophecy, it points back to Jesus. Oh, God in heaven. Amen. That's what's wrong with people now. They're looking at all these self-made prophets on social media, going around these places. Amen. Charging you an arm and a leg just for him to tell you your address like you didn't know where you lived. Just for him to tell you that you got a big toe like you didn't know you had a big toe. I come to tell you. Amen. That's why the people are confused. Amen. Because these sorry jokers are going around deceiving the people. But I come to tell you, get your eyes off of man. Get your eyes off of people and get back to the book. Get back to the word of God. What have you done with what he said? I can't level amen, man to the level of Jesus because Jesus, amen, he dwelt in the bosom of the Father before time began. I heard John say in the book of Revelation, he said he is he that was, that is, and that is to come. That ain't your pastor. No prophet can say that. Nobody but Jesus. People are looking at at people, and the enemy is using it to try to tell people that you can't live right because you're looking at people that ain't got no power. Amen. All they got is good charisma. All they got is talent. They got sophistry. They know how to talk. Amen. Amen. But they don't have no power to live holy. They don't have no power to live right. Amen. You got people looking at them thinking, well, when they fall, amen, where's my hope? What do I have left? But I come to tell you, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Y'all got to help me today. I said on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Everybody else is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'm a holy lean on Jesus' name. God never set these other people up to be your example. That's why I thank God for the Apostle Paul because of all that God used, amen, Apostle Paul to do and be. He said, listen, follow me as I follow. If I'm not following Christ, listen, I give you permission to exit. I give you permission to take a detour and go around, amen, to do whatever you got to do. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what some of these people need to do. And stop looking at these men and these women that have no power. All they got is a good word. But you got to do some more with the word. Amen. And just be able to regurgitate. But just be able to speak it. You got to apply it to your heart. And you got to live as the example. Bible says, for even unto, here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. 
who did no sin, Neither was guile or deceit. He wasn't trying to twist you up. Amen. He wasn't trying, amen, to mess you up with them parables. What he was trying to do is to gauge your level of desire. He was trying to see how bad did you really want, amen, this truth that I have. Amen. How bad were you willing to go? Were you willing to stick around, amen, for the explanation? I come to tell you, the Bible said he did no sin. So you have to worry about him sleeping with anybody. Can I get a witness here today? You ain't have to worry about him messing up. Uh, amen falling down and getting up now uh, in him he did no sin uh, neither was God found in his mouth uh, if I'm going to follow anybody uh, amen to be my example uh, let me follow somebody uh, that's a winner uh, can I get a witness here uh, ain't going to follow no loser uh, they don't have no power uh, amen to stand uh, they don't have the ability uh, amen to live holy uh, I'm going to follow somebody uh, amen that came down uh, amen through centuries uh, came down uh, through 42 generations uh, and he lived as the example for us. You got others. If it ain't just being confused on other people's example, you got some people that's just straight up rebelling against the truth. They know what Jesus said. They just don't care. They know what he teach. <laughs> just don't care. <laughs> they want to get they sent themselves to people. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says having itching ears. Amen. And we're living in a time uh, where people will not endure sound doctrine. Uh, people don't want to endure the fact that you got to come out of sin and leave sin alone. Can I get a witness here? What makes me any sense to say you can live in the mouth of a shark? What makes any sense for me to tell you, amen, that you can live out there in sin, amen? The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard, amen? The Bible lets us know that the devil comes down having great wrath. He's not trying to just hurt your feelings. He's trying to destroy you. The thief coming not but to steal and to kill and destroy. So what sense with me to be uh, to tell you you can stay in your sin? Uh, and that's what people have today. Uh, they got people, amen, in what they call a church. Uh, amen. They're telling people, uh, amen, that God is not worried about your sin. Uh, God is not worried. Listen, I come to tell you, uh, that's why Jesus came. Uh, and that's why he died. Uh, come back tonight. We'll talk about it. Uh, that's why he died. Uh, he died because of your sin. Uh, he did no sin. He was an innocent. Amen. He was not. He was a victim of your sin and mine. That's what put him on the cross. Oh, but I come to tell you, if you do something more with this word than just hear the word, you got to be a doer of it. You got to do something with it. Can I get a witness here? You can't just hear for the sake of hearing. You got to hear with the intent to obey. Because that's what the word hearken means. To hearken, to take heed to the word. It don't mean just to sit up in somebody's church and just hear. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is, a lot of people are talking about Christ. A lot of people are talking about Jesus. A lot of people are talking about the word of God. But you got to do more than just hear. You got to hear with the intent to obey. Notice I say obey, not the intent to regurgitate. Because even my children can repeat some stuff. <laughs> but it got to be in your heart. <laughs> can I get a witness here? Oh, yeah, you got kids, amen, they listen to you. <laughs> There's some little tape recorders. They, they, they got it, amen, don't even understand anything. <laughs> amen, but they listening and they can say something else. <laughs> and you looking at them like, you know, that's really above your pay grade. <laughs> amen, you listening too hard. <laughs> but I come to tell you, you got to do more than listen. <laughs> you got to listen with the intent to obey. Because you have a lot of professors of Christianity, but not a lot of practitioners of it. Can I get a witness here? You got to do more than hear it. You, Lord, people can, Lord, you go to work. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored in the Lord. Blessed be thou. Look, how you, are you okay? Good morning. <laughs> Jesus have mercy. It ain't that deep. Can I get a witness here? How you doing today? Well, the Lord didn't ride. Okay. Are you okay? Are you all right? How are you? How are you? 
Want to go out to lunch? You want a donut? What is it? It don't take, it don't, can I get a witness here? It don't take all of that, but people, you can't beat them talking about a God they won't obey. You at work with your sanctified self, amen, just meditating upon the Lord and his goodness, and then they go, they talking about Jesus in one minute and cussing the next. I come to you, you can't beat people, amen, talking about God, but it ain't about what you can talk about. It's about what you can obey. God wants your obedience. Can you say that? That's why Jesus would go around and he would say, he that hath hears to hear, let him hear. It ain't enough just to be able to quote the scriptures. Lord, have mercy. Can I talk about myself? Amen. When I first got saved, amen, I loved to be able to memorize the word. Amen. Had my, my first Bible that I had when I first got saved. It's highlights all over the place. But ask me if I understood anything. I'm talking about me now. Ask me if I understood anything. Amen. And the Lord had to deal with me. Amen. Because it's easy to talk about a God. Amen. And have them on your lips. Amen. But God said, but your heart. You can, you can draw now with me with your lips. But your heart can be far from me. And God had to challenge me. And say, listen. Of all these scriptures that you quote. How much of it are you living? Because it's not the scriptures you can quote. Lord, you can't be some people quoting the pastor. Lord, have mercy. Man of God can't even preach good. Because you got somebody, amen, I was trying to finish his sentence. Amen, trying to finish the scripture. Amen, that he's trying to say. But it ain't about whether you can quote your pastor. It's not about the way you can finish his sentence. Can you obey the doctrine he preached? Because the Bible says, he said, the spirit quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ask your neighbor, what have you done with what he said? You got to do more than just hear. You have to act upon the word of God. This is how you get a bunch of people who knows Christianity, knows church protocol, but they can't live anything because they haven't obeyed, as Paul says, from the heart. They've heard in their ears, but they haven't obeyed from the heart. Because when you hear the word of God and it challenges you and it makes you look at yourself, you have Two options. Either I'm going to reject this or I'm going to embrace this and allow this to change and transform me. It's not about the words that you can quote. I'm trying to help somebody today. You have to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. And we living in a day and time, amen, as I try to hear this morning, you living in a day and time where people would do everything short of obedience. They'll quote, they'll come to church, they don't mind being an usher, but they won't repent of their sin. They won't obey the word of God. Can I get a witness here? Amen. They'll do a whole bunch of stuff. Amen. But they won't obey his instructions. You know, everybody that you read in scriptures, when Jesus gave instructions, if they did it, they were blessed. That's why Jesus' mama, amen, at the wedding, he, he, she went to the service and said, listen, whatever he do, just tell you to do, just do it. Amen. I come to tell you the same thing. Whatever God tell you to do, do it. When he said forsake your sin, do it. When he said leave that stuff alone, do it. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Because if you do what he said do, amen, you will be blessed in the end. That's why, amen, that man that laid down at the pool of Bethesda, though he couldn't get in the water himself, when Jesus came up to him and said, with thou be made whole. Amen. And the Bible says that the man said, I don't have nobody. Amen. When I'm trying to get to the pool, amen, to take me in. But Jesus said, listen, just get up, pick 
pick up your bed and walk. I come to tell you, anybody, amen, that follow his instructions, they were blessed. You can ask that blind man, amen, the man that couldn't see, amen, Jesus put some spittle on his eye. Can I get it? Only Jesus can do that. Praise the Lord. Jesus put some spittle in his eye. Amen. And he told him, amen, a blind man to go find a pool and wash. Now, how in the world can a blind man find a pool? Lord, have mercy. How can a man, amen, who can't see, and he got some stuff in his eyes, how can he find anything? But that man was determined, amen, to be delivered. That man was determined, amen, to have his eyes open. And I don't know if he had somebody that say, lead me to this pool. I can't get there on my own. But by the time he got there and he get the, the instructions, he came back seeing. I come to tell you, you got to do more than just hear the word. You got to be a doer. Can I get a witness here? Look at somebody say, neighbor, do it, do it, do it. Do something with it. You got to be a doer of the word. Because see, there's, there's blessings in being obedient. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> I said there's blessings to being obedient. Lord have mercy. Amen. But the problem is that we have, we got people who want the blessings of obedience, but they don't want to feel the obligation of obeying. They want the blessings of obedience, but they don't want to fulfill the obligation of obeying. Because to obey means I got to sacrifice my will for his will. To, to obey, amen, I have to, I have to let go of what my desires are. And I have to surrender and humble myself to the desires of God. And sadly, you got some people, they are just like Saul. Samuel told him, the, thus said the word of the Lord, go kill everything in the Amalekites camp. Don't save nothing. Don't save a bullock. Don't save a ram. He said God is trying to fulfill his word. He's vanquishing these people off the face of the world. I guess old Saul had a better idea. Old Saul said, listen, I don't know if he was hungry or what, but he kept the sheep. He kept the rams. He, I don't know what was going on through his mind. And the prophet Samuel said, what is this I hear? I hear the... I hear the I hear some alive back there, but I told you that God said kill everything. You got to obey. You can't just hear it. You got to follow the instructions. Look at somebody say, neighbor, follow the instructions. Amen. Hey, man, and Samuel said, I hear the, <laughs> the bleeding of sheep. And old Saul was like, well, you know, I was going to offer this up to the Lord for a sacrifice. And all. He, I, I guess he felt big about himself. He did some grand. He did some good. But Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? You can't beat some people shouting. <laughs> you can't beat some people giving and God bless you. You can't, pe you can't beat some people doing a whole bunch of other stuff. But it's oh, better to obey than to sacrifice. You, that's what the Bible says. Huh? He said, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. You can keep your praise if you're not going to obey. Because anything can praise the Lord, but he wants a worshiper. To worship him in spirit and in truth. Huh? And that means you got to obey. Worshippers obey. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, hashtag, worshipers obey. God don't just want your hand raised if your heart is not receptive. God don't just want the stuff that's coming out of your mouth if you're not giving him your heart. God wants obedience. And when you hear that doesn't negate obeying, you still have to obey. And as I come to a close, Jesus... He admonishes the people to take heed to his words. Amen. He said, because if you do this, the way, however you do or however you treat his word has eternal implications. Do you understand that? Amen. If you reject or you refuse the words of life, how can you have life? 
if you, amen, spurn, uh, amen, the word of God, how can you be led uh, into victory? Uh, oh, but I heard the Hebrew writer say, uh, he said, therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we've heard uh, let's at any time we should let them slip uh, he said for if the word spoken uh, by angels was steadfast uh, and every transgression uh, and disobedience received a just recompense uh, of reward uh, the Hebrew writer say how shall we escape uh, if we neglect so great a salvation uh, I come to tell you you got to do more than hear uh, you got to do more than being able to quote uh, your favorite preacher uh, you got to do more than just being happy we're coming inside of a church amen and sitting on the pew you gotta do something with amen the word God gave you can I get a witness here and I heard Job say I know you might be thinking of the dinner amen that you're gonna have this evening but I heard Job say he said I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food I come to tell you more amen than baked potato and bacon bits and whatever else you put on it you better esteem the word of God because what you do with the word amen is going to have something to do with your future Lord have mercy I said what you do with the word has an implication of where you going and if you hate the word of God I come to tell you you're not going to be where the word of God is can I get a witness here if you reject the word of God I come to tell you your case is hopeless there is no other remedy there is no other savior there is no other deliverer other than the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said, you got to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free and be not entangled again against the yoke of bondage because after this, there ain't nothing else. Can I get a witness here? I said, after Jesus, there is no Savior. He's the only deliverer. He's the only emancipator. He's the only liberator. Can I get a witness here? I come to tell you, if you do something with the word other than just hear it, if you say like David, God, I'm going to hide this in my heart because I don't want to sin against you. Put your word deep down in my heart. If you tell me to let some go, God bless you. I'm going to let that thing go. If you tell me to stop going here, I'm going to stop going there. Can I get a witness here? God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it because you said don't be a hero only, but be a doer. Can I get a witness here. I know the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I come to tell you again that the Bible says faith without works is dead being alone. You got to do something with it. Can I get a witness here? You got to obey what the word of God says. And I come to tell you, you may ask the question, how can I respond properly to the word of God? What can I do? Amen. To receive his way. I got to tell you the first thing you need to do is receive it and don't reject it. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you may not like the preacher. You may not like the church, but you better receive this word. Can I get a witness here? You better receive Jesus. You ain't got to like me. I come to I'm a street preacher. I don't have to be liked, but I'm going to give you what thus said the Lord. Can I get a witness here? And I come to tell you, it do you some good, amen, to add this word to your life and receive it. The Bible says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. If you hear the word of God and if you obey it, it can change your life. Because I heard Jesus say, you are clean through the way wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the word of God I come to tell you if you want to be changed you got to receive his word if you want to be new you got to receive his word if you want to be delivered you got to receive his word Number two, I'm almost done. And after you receive the word, number two, you have to believe the word. Can I get a witness here? And you got to believe it regardless of your background. Because I come to tell you, 
That's what the enemy wants to do. He want to make you seem like that you're too bad of a sinner that God can save. The devil is a lie. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you come from. I come to tell you you can be delivered. You can be set free. I heard John say, Behold the Lamb that came to take away the sins of the world. That's your sin, my sin, your daddy's sin, whoever else. I come to tell you you got to believe the word of God Hebrews says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it Lord have me I come to you you got to mix this thing with some faith you got to believe that God is possible for me to change I dare you to look to your neighbor and say neighbor it's possible I know you may be saying well preacher I've been trying to change I've tried to change myself and I can't change myself well I come to tell you that's good you can come to Jesus and if you receive his word and if you believe it in your heart you shall be saved can I get a witness here and lastly you got to continue amen in the word of God touch somebody and say neighbor you got to continue in this Bible says we are not of them who draw back unto perdition Oh, but we of them that believe uh, to the saving of the soul. Uh, Lord, have mercy. That means we believe. We're not like demons. Because uh, the Bible says even devils believe and tremble. Uh, but we believe to the saving of our soul. We believe to the point to where we are changed. We are transformed by the word of God. Because one of these days, as I close, one of these days we're all going to hear his voice. That's where the saints get happy. <laughs> I said one of these days. May not be in the sky. <laughs> might be from the ground but one of these days uh, we all are going to hear his voice uh, can I get a witness here uh, and if you've done the right thing with it uh, I come to tell you God got a blessing for you uh, that's out of this world uh, literally uh, can I get a witness here uh, I come to tell you he said everybody in the grave uh, they're going to hear my voice uh, and they shall come forth uh, those that rejected the word uh, those that did evil uh, those that didn't want Jesus uh, they're going to get up to the resurrection of death. Oh, but is there anybody here today that said, I've done the right thing with the word of God. When the preacher preached it, I may not have liked it, but I ate it. Lord, have mercy. When the preacher spoke it, I may not want to hear it, but I ate it. And I come to tell you, if you be like Ezekiel, he told Ezekiel, son of man, behold the scroll. It's written in and it's written on the outside and he says son of man you got to eat the whole roll not come to tell you when you eat this word of God sometime it'll hurt you sometime it'll hit you sometime you'll say ouch but I come to tell you if you hold on to the word and you obey the word it'll change your life and when Jesus come in that great getting up morning the word in me is going to get up with me can I get a witness here the life of I live is going to get up with me. I'm not going down. I'm going up because I did the right thing with the word of God. You can dig a person only so deep, but if they did the right thing with the word of God, wherever they are, they got to come up because of the word and what they did with it. Look at somebody say, neighbor, do something with it. Do something with it. Everybody standing this morning. What have you done with the word? With what he said? What have you done with it? It's not enough just to hear. You have to obey. It's, it's, it's not enough just to be able to quote the preacher. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's not a, that's not enough. You have to hearken. You have to be willing to obey. Let me use my son as an example. I can talk to my son. <laughs> he can stand as close to me as that speaker. 
I can talk to him. I can tell him instructions. Tell him what to do. And it's like you haven't said anything at all. When you go tell him, yeah, pray for him. He, he, he'll be all right. When you give him instructions, you give him leave, his mind is on so much other stuff. His boy, his mind, he'd he be, he be on planets and whatever in the sea. His mind be on some other stuff. We'll come back and say, Emmanuel, did you hear what we said? <laughs> yes. What did we say? Can't even <laughs> I don't know. You said, I mean, you stood right in front of me. It'd be different if it's across the way somewhere, you know, things get lost in translation, but you are right here in front of me. <laughs> yes, it's only sometimes. You're right. <laughs> only sometimes. More than enough. <laughs> but it's not just hearing. You, you come here and you hear the word, but what are you doing with it? Because if you're distracted by everything else, if you allow the enemy to come in and uproot that word out of your heart and out of your hearing, how can you benefit from a word you can't obey? How can you be a benefit from a word you don't even know? Who can follow instructions when you don't know them? I wait. Nobody can follow instructions. You have to, if you don't know the instructions, how can you follow? And that's what God, it's not enough just to come in here. You got to follow. You have to apply this to your life. <clears throat> if you really want change, you have to apply. And it may hurt. Oh, sometimes it feels like it's surgery. Because, you know, the Bible says that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharpening into a surgery. Sometimes, boy, it feels like the word just dig it in there. But that's what you want because you want him to take out everything that's not like God. That's it, that's it. Yes, sir. That's why the older saints, I love what they used to say, Lord, make me right. Yeah. I want to be right. Lord, if you got to hit me in the face with the word, make me right. I want to be right. And I come to tell you, if you want to be right with God, do something with the word that you've heard. There's anybody here today that want to be saved. We invite you to come. If anybody have a need of prayer or anything, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We want you to come. This is the time. This is the opportunity. This is your moment to do something with the word. Not just be able to quote it. Not just read it every now and then. But you got to obey this thing. And I come to tell you, there is a blessing in obedience. Has anybody here been blessed since you've obeyed the word? <laughs> there is blessings in obedience. And God is reaching out to somebody. He's letting you know, listen. All that other stuff can't equate to Jesus Christ. All that other spiritual stuff. I'm spiritual. Yeah, but are you Christian? Are you saved? I'm spiritual, but are you holy? And if you're not holy, this is your opportunity to respond to the word. Because, see, that's what Jesus was looking for. He was looking for a response. He was looking to see, are you hungry? You see, people talk about being hungry. But if you just put a menu in front of your face but never order from it, you're not hungry. And if the food come, I don't care how much you say, man, I'm famished. If all you do is smell it and you never eat it, you're not hungry. You got to take this word in. And it has to become part of your life. And that is seen by you being transformed by the word. We don't seek to change this. We seek to be changed by this. So if there's anybody today, if you want something from the Lord, we want you to come. If there's any prayer requests, we want you to come. Amen. We're going to pray with thee.
Come on, didn't we enjoy the word on this morning? Didn't we enjoy the man of God on this morning? Hallelujah. We thank God for the word. Amen. You may be seated as we get ready to be dismissed. Amen. Such a powerful word. Amen. Question, what are we doing with what he said? Amen. And we're going to have to give an account. Amen. When we meet the Lord. Amen. Don't be resurrected. It's just what, which resurrection are you going to take part in? And as he was saying, you know, we have to be doers of the word. Doers of what we hear. And you know, within that verse, it says, not deceiving your own self. So many times we think about the spirit of deception, and sometimes deception is lying within our own self. We deceive in our own selves by not taking heed to the word of God. And so we thank God. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Such an awesome word from the man of God. I tell you, look at somebody and tell them we ain't good on this morning, didn't we? Yeah, eating a whole scroll. That's what I'm talking about. We thank God for our dear brother, Davis, and certainly we're going to continue to pray for our brother, amen, and God, what God is doing in his life, amen, the ministry, his family, amen, definitely always keep the, and let me say this, you know, so many times we think about the person that's preaching, but we forget about the ones that's with him. Yeah, yeah, because you know the devil uh, not, don't, not only attacks the preacher, attacks the family, attacks the next thing next to you, amen, and not only you, amen, and one thing that I've discovered you as a believer, he going to attack you. <laughs> amen. And so the thing about it, we want to definitely pray. Amen. Pray for our brother. Amen. Amen. And pray for Emmanuel that he listen all the time. <laughs> amen. We all one big family. Amen. Any more announcements? Amen. We want to welcome once again, Brother Michael. Amen. Brother Michael. Amen. Visiting with us. A guest of Sister Andrews, amen. We praise God for you being with us, amen. Amen, amen. And we would like to ask the church to please pray for Sister Woodson, amen. She was in a car accident on Friday, amen. So pray for Sister Woodson, amen. We also would like to wish a very special happy birthday, 78th birthday to Sister Leonard on today. Woo! Happy birthday, Sister Leonard. All right, Sister Leonard, wave your hand so we know God who you are. You. There she is. Hallelujah. 78. Amen. That's all. Oh, that's all. Amen. That's all. Amen. Amen. All minds clear. Once again, let's thank God for the word on this morning. As you rise to your feet. May the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. I hope the word you heard today you strength along the way. May the Lord God bless you real good. Oh, may the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. I hope the word you heard today gives you strength along the way. May the Lord God bless you real good. And don't forget, tonight is Communion Sunday, so those of you who can wear white, do so if you can't.